How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here once again. This time we're going to take a look at kinetic equations, rearranging equations with logs. So our objective is, will be to rearrange the kinetic equations to solve for each of the variables. So that means we're going to have to deal with logs for that first order reaction uh, kinetic equation. So this is just kind of hopefully be a video that helps people that are that struggle with algebra and rearranging equations in general, especially if they struggle with logs. So crash course logs, what even are they? So if I had this relationship between X and Y, you know, Y equals 10 to the X, 10 is our base for an unknown exponent X. You know, if I had X equals two, I can plug that in real easy and solve for Y 10 to the two, I know is hundred. Awesome. Boom. Solve for Y. But what if I had something like this, hundred equals 10 to the X, where I have to go in the other direction They give me Y and I have to figure out X. Maybe this isn't as easy. Maybe it is for you, but you know, if you get into something, that's more ugly, like 48 equals 10 to the X. There's, there's no chance, at least for me, that I'm going to be able to figure out what X is in my head. So this is where logs come into play. So logs are helpful mathematical expressions for exponential relationships. So if I had Y equals 10 to the X, 10 is referred to as our base for the unknown exponent X. So log base 10 of Y equals X, right? So 10 to some number x will give me y. That's how you're reading this. The base is the base for the exponent on the other side. So log base 10 of y equals x is the same thing as this equation. It's just written as an exp a log expression. So log base 10 of 100 equals x, x equals 2, right? So most of the time on calculators, the log button is default base 10. So that is what it is by default. So rearranging logs, when you have to add logs with the same base together, for example, if I had log base 10 of 10,000 plus log base 10 of 100, how am I going to do this? So log base 10 of 10,000 is the equivalent to saying, you know, 10 to some number gives me 10,000 and plus log base 10 of 100, 10 to some number gives me 100. And I'm, you know, trying to figure out what do I do with those some numbers. So I know 10 to some number that gives me 10,000 is four. So I know that, you know, X is four in this part and here X is two. So it's really saying add four and two together and I get six. So it's equivalent to multiplying the insides of the logs together. So I worked it out separately, but let me show you how you can combine them and do it at once. So note, they have to have the same base. You can only combine things if they have the same base. So log base 10 of 10,000 plus log base 10 of 100 is equivalent to multiplying those two numbers together inside. So when I get 10,000 times 100, I end up with, I don't even know, a million? Yeah, I end up with log base 10 of a million and that is six, right? So it's saying 10 to some number gives me a million. Well, then some number has to be six. So adding logs together that have the same bases, the rule is you multiply the insides together. All right, so that's the rule for adding them together. You multiply the insides. Well, with subtracting logs with the same base, if you, you know, you know, math a little bit, you might take a guess what you're gonna do. If you add, you gotta multiply the insides together. Well, let's see what happens with subtracting logs. So if I had log base 10 of 10,000 again, but instead of adding, I subtracted log base 10 of 100. Again, same process. 10 to some number gives me 10,000 minus, you know, 10 to some other number equals 100. So here again, x equals 4. On this side, x equals 2 again. So 4 minus 2 gives me 2. So it's the equivalent to dividing the insides of the logs together. So again, you got to make sure you have the same base for your logs. So log base 10 of 10,000 minus log base 10. Hey, this minus tells me I should divide the insides together. So 10,000 divided by 100. When I do that math, I get 100. So log base 10 of 100 equals 2. Because I know 10 to some number equals 100. That some number has to be 2, right? So subtracting logs together that have the same base, the rule is divide the insides together. So rearranging logs. How do you get rid of the log? Well, if it was log base 10, first step is to get the log part on one side of the equation by itself. So if this was my starting point, I have to get rid of this plus five. So I subtract five from both sides and I end up with this expression right here. 
So now I got the log on one side by itself. Now you just make the other side the exponent to the base of your log. So my base is 10 for this log. So I'm going to have to put this whole side as my exponent. So 10 to x minus 5 equals what was in the parentheses of the log equals 1,000. So I could go ahead and solve that, but right now I just want to focus on rearranging. If you had different bases, uh, you know, instead of using base 10, you're using base 3 or something, it's the same process. So how do you get rid of this log? Well, first, get the log to be by itself on both sides. So in this example, i got to add 2 to both sides so that this 2 cancels out. So I get log base 3 of 27 equals x plus 2. Same thing. Now you make the other side the exponent to the base of your log. So if my log was base 3 instead of base 10, it's going to be 3 to the x plus 2 equals 27. So again, I can solve for that now, but I'm, that, right now I just want to focus on rearranging things. So ln, natural logs. ln is referred to as the natural logs. Now sometimes, you know, I capitalized L here. It's usually lowercase L. This is not, it's not an I, all right? It's ln, it's a natural log. It's a log like what we've just been talking about, the, but the base isn't 10, all right? The base is E, Euler's number. It's an irrational number. It's a special number kind of like how pi is and the origin of which we don't need to get into at all. Just know that it's this irrational number and that's what we're using as the base. So natural log is equal log base E. It's the equivalent of saying that. So the same rules apply for ln as a log for adding and subtracting them together like we, what we just talked about. So if I had natural log of five plus natural log of six, again, if I'm adding them together, then you multiply the insides, right? So five times six gives me 30. So ln of five plus ln of six is equivalent to the ln of 30. All right, so the natural log of 12 minus the natural log of two. Again, if we're subtracting, then you gotta divide the insides. That's the rule. So I go 12 divided by two gives me six. So this is equivalent to this right there, right? So here's another example, or, well, yeah, there we go. ln of four minus three, again, same steps get the net log by itself so i gotta add three to both sides and then put that whole other side to the base now the base of natural log is e so four equals e to the x plus three All right so same process so how is this going to translate into our kinetics equations remember we got two different ones first order has the natural log in it the second order is going to be easier to rearrange so let's start with the hard stuff first order kinetics equation. Natural log of the amount at that time equals a negative kt plus the natural log of the starting amount. So if I want to get at by itself, well, I'm trying to get it by itself. There's a natural log. It's already by itself on one side. So the amount at that time, to get rid of the natural log, you put the whole other side to the base of e. So it's going to be e to the negative kt plus the natural log of a0. And that's it. That one was pretty easy. Well, let me finish my parentheses. What if I wanted to get a zero? Again, I'm going to have to get this by itself. So I'm going to have to add kt to both sides. So I get ln of the amount at that time plus kt equals the natural log of a zero. So now I got the log part by itself. Put the whole other side to the base of e and then there you go it's e to the natural log of the amount at the time plus kt not so bad what about k i want to get k by itself all right well first off i'm gonna to have to do a little math so i get ln of at well i gotta get k and t by itself so i want to subtract ln of a zero and that'll get rid of it on that side and that equals negative kt. Well, I know if I'm subtracting, it's the same thing as dividing. So I can do ln of at divided by a0, which is equivalent to the side. Now let me divide each side by negative t. And that gives me my k. So maybe I want to rewrite it. ln of at over a0 over t, and then the whole thing's negated. So yeah, that's rearranged cell for k. What if I want to solve for t? It's going to be like the same exact process. So I got to get the kt by itself. So ln 
of the amount at the time minus ln of the starting amount is going to equal my negative kt. So again, I can combine these. If I'm subtracting, it's the same thing as dividing the insides. And then divide by negative k. And that gives me my t. That's it. So second order, we don't have to worry about the log rules and stuff, but you know it has its own kind of challenges. So if I want to solve for the amount at that time, well, I have one over the amount at that time. So to get it to be the numerator, I do one divided by that whole thing. I got to do it to the other side as well. So the amount at that time is going to equal one divided by kt plus one over the starting amount. Right, so not so bad. If I want to solve for k, all right, well, let me get rid of this one over a zero thing. So I get one over the amount at that time minus one over the starting amount equals kt. Now I got to divide each side by t. And on this side, the t's cancel out, and now I've solved for k. Not so bad. T, same process, almost identical, almost. So one over the amount at that time minus one over the amount that you started with is going to equal kt. And this time I'm going to divide by k. So all that divided by k, k's cancel out, and I'm left with t. All right, a zero, a little, this is probably the most obnoxious one for this equation. So I got to get rid of the kt. So I get one over the amount at that time minus kt equals one over a zero. So now again, the amount that I started with is in the denominator. To get rid of that, I got to do one divided by that whole thing on both sides. So I get one divided by one over at minus kt is going to equal the starting amount, a zero. So summarize, can you rearrange kinetics equations for first and second order reactions to solve for any one of those variables? Uh, Cause that's the only objective. So hopefully that, hopefully you found that helpful. If not, I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Bye.